The Red Dirt D&D Podcast is brought to you by Pro Laser Cuts. The Oklahoma company provides pre-made and customizable design laser cut dice towers, tokens, and more developed by a gamer for gamers and now available to enhance your tabletop game. Pro Laser Cuts products can be found at many Oklahoma City area game stores, local events, and now available online at ProLaserCuts.com. That's laser and cuts with a Z, Pro Laser Cuts. So you're saying it's kind of like like magic. I just talk right there and, and it, people hear it? Yes, Mucker, and that's exactly right. So so kind of like the message cantrip, I just learned that. That's, that's true. It's, let's think about it that way. You speak... And then kind of like group message. Lots of people can hear it all at once. Well, all right. Uh, I guess we should talk about what we were going to talk about. Yep, let's go ahead. What do you got? Well, uh, I just want to thank all the folks out there that's been listening around the campfire or wherever you listen uh, to uh, to our story. And uh, it sure has been exciting. So thank you. And uh, what's the word? All right, subscribing and also liking and sharing and giving us giving us a rating uh, anywhere from one to five jackalopes uh, stars, Mokran. But but I like jackalopes. That's good. I'll see. Uh, I'll see if we can figure that out. Well, yeah, I just you know supposing. Okay, very good, very good. Anyway, any anything else that you want to say before we before we wrap up? Uh, nope. Just thank you all very much, and uh, I'm gonna go see what kind of troubles Onimus has gotten into while while I've been over here, and uh, and and we'll go. Um, it, one one last thing, uh, Brooke. Yes, sir. You you seem awful familiar. You know, Mocker and I. I don't doubt that you feel that way a lot. Welcome to Red Dirt D&D. I'm Michael Cross, and I play Gideon Block, a paladin of Daga, bringing her justice to the wilds of Ritoya. I'm Connor Chanel, and I play Connor with a K, the kobold sorcerer who's finally out of the bag. I'm Johnny Payne, and I play Zonimus Dinar, a roguish warlock, controlling his fate with chaos. I'm Kiri Hester, and I play Poppy Tealeaf, a high-born halfling druid who has forsaken her family for the call of the frontier. I'm Brooke Bullock, and I play Mokrin Stoneshaper, a young dwarf sorcerer wielding his arcane gifts to delve into the mysteries of the wilderness. And I'm Ash King, your dungeon master. Join us now for Tales from the Callban Frontier. Continuing to explore the remains of the crashed skyship, you manage to find some treasures, find some secrets hidden. But descending lower, you found a place of pain. Cages lining the wall where the unfortunate, unwilling slaves of the Empire were once kept. The air here is noticeably colder, the energy noticeably darker as you step onto this deck and hear a voice hiss into your ear. Leave this place. I stand in front of the rest of the group. Shield up. Real quick question. I had cast magic weapon on my gun. Has it been longer than an hour? I'm guessing not since we still have Pete. No. You yeah. still have. You've got Pete. I would give it a good 15 minutes. Okay. Then I draw my weapon and stand before everybody, keeping them, protecting them. And I say, reveal yourself. You see shimmering into existence. <clears throat> Three figures dressed in the armor of the empire with the prominent black handprint emblazoned on their tunics. Each clutches a longsword and a shield looking at you all. Plunged this ship to the ground thousands of years ago and killed you once. You want me to have to do it again? We are what are the of the Obsidian God, and we will defend. Well, see, my friend Gideon here has been having a great influence over me lately, whether he knows it or not. And I was actually considering letting you three live, but because you think there is still an Obsidian Guard, that time has passed. Fireball. <laughs> Eldred Blast. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's say you gave that necklace to Connor. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, there's three. So. Well, uh, uh, oh, well, I'm going to shoot them both with the one that was speaking. Okay. 
16? 16 hits exactly. Yeah. Okay, yay. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And can I be firing at the same time he's doing his own response? After he rolls this damage, we're going to go into an That's initiative. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Eight on one, and that is very cock. Five on the other. All right. Well, boys and girls, I think this is the appropriate time to roll initiatives. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. I'm going to start rolling on TNT Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny's dice box has cursed. Uh-huh. Cursed. Um, 14. Connor? Seven. Gideon? 16. Macron? 21. Poppy? 23. 23. Wow. Wow. I rolled a nat 20. <laughs> nice. All right. Get them walking spells out there. All right. Early. <laughs> All right. All right. So All right. low on <laughs> spell slots. So, the scene before you, my friends. You have just descended down onto B deck. There is a mass of cages to one side, and then a pretty open space other than that. Looks like probably at one point, if you look closely, you could see like hooks on the walls where hammocks would have hung mm. for the rest of the non-enslaved crew. Oh Some rotting wood and chairs that may have been part of like the galley. So this was at one time an area where the crew would just kind of hang out. You have the hole behind you, and to left, right, and center of your group, you have these three. And Gideon, I will allow you to roll a religion check because these are undead. Oh, 14. They are a type of wraith, specifically called sword wraiths. Oh, okay. Sounds creepy. Yes. <laughs> um, they are warriors who died without earning honor. Right. So they seem to basically kind of be guarding this place that was once their oath bound, sworn to protect this place. How far away are they? They're all within a 30 foot okay. distance. So you've got one kind of front and center and then the other two to the two sides of you, boxing you in with this hole. And so. Tony hit the one in the center? Yes. Good. Yeah, that's the one that was speaking. Poppy, mm -hmm. what would you like to do? Um, I do want to uh, own up for whoever was listening and tracking my spells. <laughs> I said that I gave Pete protection from energy, but I could not have because that is also a concentration spell. So I'm glad Pete didn't take any damage. So that never came up, but I will take the used spell slot as punishment. Okay. <laughs> so I'm very low on spells. Pete is upstairs. <laughs> yeah, you see Pete the polar bear just kind of look down. Um, <laughs> could Pete... <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to try for the polar bear to jump down and join you? Yeah! I don't know how well it would work. Pull that Coca-Cola rattle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because he doesn't have thumb, so he can't... <laughs> Use the rope at all. He couldn't <laughs> use the rope, but he could, in theory, try to like jump, this jump way. sideways and like catch the. Polar bear slide. Is there any way he could slide <laughs> down the board? <laughs> um, so I'm going to have Pete. I would, yeah, I would basically say Pete would need to make an athletics check. Well, he's real strong. Yeah, he is. So we'll try. Pete, give it a shot. And if you fail, then I have other. <laughs> Just disperse yourself. Man, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Just tuck and roll, tuck and roll, tuck and roll! <laughs> um, so that's gonna be a 16. 16, okay. So yeah, so luckily Pete, jumping through the hole, manages to catch the side of kind of where you guys are and scrabble his way. Um, you know, you do see like some of the boards kind of break a little bit under his weight, but he does manage to safely get onto B deck with you guys. Wow, Pete, that was so impressive. You are a magnificent <laughs> creature. Now, can you please do me a favor <laughs> and <laughs> attack these spooky fellas? <laughs> so, he's gonna do that. I'm gonna say, Pete, get that one and go after the one that's on this has already hit it. Okay, so. This one will be his bind, because that's the one I can reach first, so that's going to be an 18 plus 7. Will hit? Oh, the other one probably will not. Only a 4 plus 7, so an 11. Mm, nope. So his bite will hit. 9 piercing damage with his teethy. Okay. And biting into the air where this sword wraith exists, because they are very ghostly. Mm-hmm. It is not quite as effective as you I would imagined. Have hoped. So... 
That was nine points, you said? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that would be reduced to that. Let me ask you this. Now that I've watched something try to actually, like, mm -hmm. attack it, mm -hmm. I don't know how to form this into a question, but here's what I want to know. Would it be more advantageous for me to disperse Pete <laughs> and cast maybe Flame Blade? Yes. Okay. So good, good job, Pete. Your work is done. <laughs> Thanks for coming down here. <laughs> Take him over to and I will. Drop concentration. <laughs> if I say bye to Pete. <laughs> as, he, as he pops up in a Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I you get to did relax. A, you did a great job. I'm sure I'll call on you again in the future. <laughs> so... What do I have left? Because that was technically Pete's thing, but mm -hmm. it's me dropping concentration any kind you of... You would drop concentration, which I believe you could just drop concentration, like that's not an action to do so. It would be less of an action to stop thinking about something. Right. You mm -hmm. just... And even just casting the spell itself drops the concentration yeah. automatically. So I would so. I would say that you could go ahead and do Flame Blade. Flame on Blade! Because it's also dark. <laughs> so this will be helpful. Now you can see. <laughs> So I have a flame blade. Unfortunately, I have to walk right up to <laughs> That you do. But I don't have very many spells. <laughs> this is my best bet. So I'm going to try to smack him. And are you going after the... The same one. The, okay. That Pete just bit it. Nat 20. Excellent. Nat 20. So I did double I did. all that lovely dice damage. I want to roll them all at once to make a satisfying sound. <laughs> so I need more. One, two, three. Okay, so this is, it's regularly 3d6, but now it is 66. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. And the d6s go everywhere. 18 fire damage. 18 fire. Nice. And Excellent. that is my turn. All right, and okay, it which does. Which one was that, the middle one? The one that you already hit. Okay. Yes, so you slash at it with this flame blade, mm -hmm. and yes, it does take the full brunt of the damage. There goes. You can't poke them. You got a magic on. <laughs> All right, and so that first initial sword wraith, not looking too good. I mean, looking worse than what it started yeah. off at. Makron. Well, we have stone durability hanging on. And the stone aegis that I did earlier only lasts like a minute. Okay. But I'm going to do that again. Okay. So okay. before Gideon steps away from Mokrin, Mokrin reaches out and uses the stone sorcery ability to grant him a reduction, an immunity of three hit points. Okay. I mean, I'm the one standing in the middle of the ghost, but okay. All right. I think that lasts for 10 rounds. So anytime he gets a piercing bludgeon, yeah, basically a physical next, attack. So yeah, for so, the next minute. Yep. And then movement-wise, I'm going to move about halfway closer to the one on the left. Okay. And that's well. my auctions. All righty. Gideon. Since I've got my magic weapon out, I'm going to go ahead and use my revolver. Go after the one on Poppy. Okay. 26 to hit. Will hit. 10 points of damage. 10 points. Second shot. Okay. Uh, nine. Well, what I will say is that as you fire off these blessed bullets, as it strikes true center mass into this wraith, you hear a scream as the spirit dissipates. Oh, nice. Nice. Dang it, Gideon, I was gonna finish that one. Wow. I'm standing right here. I didn't figure we were getting that close to finishing it, though. They said that it, they looked really bad. <laughs> but I didn't, I, yeah. You, okay. Do you feel hit it? it with a crit. Yeah, I critted it. Okay, I, I sorry, I didn't. The polar bear also hit it, and Zonimus hit it. With, yeah, I just didn't, I didn't want you to be in any danger, so. Yeah. <laughs> This bullet I can do goes it flying myself. over your head. It was to protect you. I, it, was, it was actually trying to protect you. <laughs> I don't know what these things will do if they actually I do. imagine that your blessed bullets are like the bullets in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yes, Rabbi. they are. <laughs> Yee-haw! Yee <-haw. laughs> so, is that, that is one. one. That was two. He just okay, fired nope, two Okay, no, it was just one, right? Because I this, the second one. Correct, yeah, you have not. Oh, but I did fire the second you one. You fired, yeah, you missed. I just missed. <laughs> oh, okay, thank so, you. So, keep track of those, Gideon. Oh, yeah. You get six before you got to reload. So that was Gideon. Mm -hmm. Next up would be Zonimus. Well, so you me. have the two sword wraiths, one to the left, one to the right. Before I Eldritch Blast them, and the time it took for us to go through the armory and find the sword and identify that stuff and all mm -hmm. the other things and those and mm -hmm. then come down to here, 
Has an hour passed? Nope. I'm no, going because to I had to dispel Pete. No. Yeah. And I still got my magic weapon. Disadvantage Lee. I would say for your poison condition, you've yeah. probably got another 30 minutes okay. before it's going to go away. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Disadvantage by poison. <laughs> Not check a trap. So I shot an Eldritch Blast past it, and then I shot an Eldritch Blast past it. Oh. Oh, this advantage is hard. <laughs> <laughs> and then I done. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to do a thing either. So. All right. Go. Bye. All right. Well, I can help you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> dead tomorrow. It is the time now for the sword rates. <laughs> yeah! But the good news is there's only two of them now. There's two. I'm right yeah. there. I'm the only one right there. Oh, but you're <laughs> way up where the, well, that one was dead. I killed it. That's yeah, why. Yeah, I, I, were they not like. No, they're on our side. Oh, to. they're trying to flank us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Them is smart guards. It's mm-hmm. like they were trained for this. Yep. Mockran, you move towards one? Halfway, yep. <laughs> So it is going to move towards you and meet you halfway as it swings Ooh. a longsword. Be a 22. Oh, that is a hit. For 12 points oh. of slashing damage. And then it is actually going to use its bonus action to make a second attack. But that is only going to be a eight to hit. That's a big old miss. Yeah. And as you see it swing its sword again, um, it actually leaves an opening. So Ooh. attack rolls against that sword wraith will have advantage until the start of the sword wraith's next turn. Ooh. That's yep, interesting. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. So the other sword wraith that's on the right side is actually going to step up towards you, Zominus, and will swing once with the long sword. Be a 19. 19 will hit me. For, ooh, rolling hot today. 12 points slashing. Down. Okay, I'm going to react. Okay. I will take the 12 points slashing, and then I'm going to, it slashes me, and I'll look down at the gash across my chest and pull my hand out, and it's covered in blood, and I'll start laughing. Just, <laughs> and I'll raise that bloody hand and point at it, and when I do, I'm going to whistle. And in the matter of less than two seconds, the rising sound of barking and yipping and gnarling, and then it fades out as though it's running away in a distance, and it's just like a silence. And then an eruption from the ground up of darkish, hellish flames that burst out into a bright green. As Hellish Rebuke kicks in, and oh, it takes... Nice. Nice. And it will have to make a deck save. It makes a deck save. Coyote's Rebuke. That is an eight. <laughs> it takes nine points of fire damage. Nice. nice. See, at first I thought that was going to be a reference to Yondu. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm Mary Poppins. Maybe my laugh turns into a growl. <laughs> I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> oh, I, like that. I like the laugh becoming a growl. The laugh becomes a growl. Don't whistle. The laugh becomes a growl. Then the yeah. yipping starts. Or even the howl. Of coyotes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. That's my reaction. Yes. yes. And that's it. Well then, that is it for my sword rates. Connor. Yay, finally my turn. Okay. <laughs> so that whole necklace happened. No. <laughs> Eight fireballs. Conflagration. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I see the one, um, the sword wraith go over to Zonimus mm-hmm. and it hit, mm-hmm. and I quickly pull up this undulating, warbling mass of chaotic energy, mm-hmm. and I fling it at the creature. And since Zonimus is there, I get advantage because pack tactics. We'll see about that. 24 uh, total. Hit. I am going to use my shiny dice as whatever the damage type will be. Okay. Ooh, two eights. So 16 points of thunder damage. And because I rolled same digit numbers, it will bounce off of that creature and leap over to the other sword wraith Wait. if it is at least within 30 feet of it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah baby. Kaboom, and so kaboom. once again, I got to roll for what the damage type will be. It will be poison damage for seven on the other sword wraith. This thunder streaks out and strikes the first sword wraith. 
it then ricochets over to the second sword wraith in midair, transforming from this thunder to this poison. As the poison splashes against the second sword wraith, it doesn't do anything. Aww. Immune, immune to poison. Oh. <laughs> it is a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> I but can't it looks cool. What, yeah, it looks awesome. But it's magic poison. <laughs> <laughs> magic poison? Can it get half? No, nope, no. <laughs> they don't have half a bar. Then. All right. Is that all for you, Connor? Yes. If you had rolled doubles again, would it bounce again? Yes. Yep. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Chaos Ricochet. Bolt is amazing. <laughs> amazing. And again, you know, from, a statistic, no from a statistic tam- standpoint, you know, it's not going to happen often, but it could, in theory, happen oh, where it just keeps ricocheting. Oh, I had to make a new attack roll against that. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. It's also advantage. Yeah. 15 plus 6. Yeah, it would have okay. It would have hit. It would have hit um, if it wasn't And poison. had it not been poisoned, it would have done it does damage. Hit, it just... <laughs> so that's good to know. Yeah. Yes. So that will bring us back around to Poppy. Oh, it's my turn. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we got Makra in fighting one, mm-hmm. and then there's one on Zonimus. You said? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go fight Zonimus's one. I'm gonna try to smack him with my sword made of flames. Zonimus, watch out! Stand back. I'll save you. <laughs> oh, <run. laughs> oh, and probably whiff because that's only a fourteen. Yeah, you whiff. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I hit. Wait, you look bad, right? <laughs> no, I look like this. <laughs> do you want healing or not? Yes. Can I do a healing word? I think we talked about this last time. It's a bonus action, right? Yeah, it's a bonus action spell. You technically have not cast a spell this turn. Okay, you just get a level one, though, because I am out of spells. Not that much. You got six. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Macron. Even if it's a spell attack, I get advantage on it. Attack rolls have advantage. Attack rolls so have a advantage. Spell, I would oh, consider a spell attack. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> oh, my good old dice. Ooh. I rolled a three and a four. Lovely. <laughs> With advantage. So Beautiful. This, this little green golf ball size orb of acid goes right over its head as I try to cast Chromatic Orb no, and missed. Gideon. Let me ask you a question. So since he didn't hit, are mm-hmm. we still at advantage on that? Oh, yes. Even if he did hit, you would have advantage. So I'll just turn my gun on it, so with advantage. 16 plus. Go hit. 11 points of damage. Okay. Second shot. Okay, 18 plus. Go hit. 8 points of damage. With one sword wraith defeated, the other two closing in on the two sides of the party. Gideon had just fired off two shots, striking one of the sword wraiths. Zonimus, it is your turn. Indeed it is. I'm going to... Oh, what's the advantage? That's... that's the uh, it was on the sword wraith number two, but not Not the one not that's yours. on us. Right. Okay, so I'm kind of leaning over to sword wraith number... To, or to that one and flicking a card at it. Okay. So, because I have disadvantage and that gives me advantage, I'm So neutral. you just straight roll. So, 18 to hit. Will yeah. indeed hit. And then it is going to do... Is it magic? Um, it is mm-hmm. magic. So it's, yeah, it does slicing damage. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's this playing cards. So, there's 1d4. However, was anyone within five feet of it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mock And then the D4 result, it does uh, 14 damage. 14, okay. And it is shackled, if it can be shackled. Okay. Until the start of the next turn, the speed is halved. It can't make more than one attack on its turn while its speed is reduced this way. Nice. And then I'm going to stand there. All right. Staring so. at the one in front of me. Don't worry, I'll save you. <laughs> yes, so you Poppy, me that, soul once. That, that sword <laughs> wraith that out. is uh, in front of you will strike out twice, with, or strike out once with the long sword. That's gonna be a natural 20. Oof. Ah. Ooh, no. Uh-oh. On the first swing for 11 points of slashing damage. To me? Yes, to you. Okay, sorry. Did you. <laughs> to you, my dear. And then <laughs> it is going to use its martial fury to strike out again, but this one will miss with only a nine. But you will have advantage on your attacks. Yeah. Uh, the other sword wraith, the one that had been shackled by Zonimus's card trick, is going to swing at Makran. 
It'll be a 23. Yes, that's a hit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For six points of slashing damage. Okay. And it will not be able to use its martial fury ability because it is shackled, so there will be no advantage on that <laughs> sword race. But the one that Poppy's fighting, yes, you will get advantage on that one. Connor. So I'm kind of annoyed that my arcing chaos blade didn't hit the <laughs> second one. So this time I'm going to aim at the second one okay. uh, with the same weird undulating spell and see if I can hit it. Okay. So you hit it and do damage that actually affects it? That's only a 12. <laughs> I curse it out in Draconic. (laughs) (laughs) Angry kobold noises intensify. Uh, Language. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have to watch my language if it's in a different language that no one knows how to speak. (laughs) None of the rest of you speak Draconic. I can tell by tone. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Poppy, you're up. Let's make it. Well, I'm going to try something. Let's see what happens. 15. 15 will not hit. Yep. Is that all for you this turn, Poppy? Um, I'm gonna give myself a little healing. (laughs) Okay, I give myself six. My turn. Zonimus flung a card at the one on my side of the room. Indeed he did. And so in kind of tag team fashion, I'm going to throw (laughs) an orb back at the one over by him. Lovely, I love it. With a, yay, a two and an 18. Woo-woo! 20 points of damage from this acid ball. Eight, seven, and five. All right, so the sword wraith in front of Poppy uh, disappears with a scream and a pluck. Daggone! I was going to get that one, I got it, I was... Quick, run to the other one. (laughs) All right. <laughs> Poor Bobby's bringing up her little, her little dagger, her little Bowie knife. I He's worked on like, this play, play. <laughs> Gideon. So there's one left. How's it looking? It's shackled. Um, it's not. It's looking. I mean, I would use the term bloodied, but you know, it's a ghost. Yeah. No advantage on it, but I'm gonna go ahead and attack with uh, my last two bullets in the gun. Sixteen. Sixteen will hit. Thirteen points of damage. Second shot. Eighteen plus. Will hit. Nine points of damage. Nine. Okay. So that will empty out the barrels, so I will put it away and draw my scimitar. All right. So well, with that final shot, as the smoke comes off the gun barrel, the bullet once more rips through the chest of this creature, destroying it in a show Ooh. of light. And the three sword wraiths are laid to rest. Again. I gotta say, uh, good job, everybody. That was working as a team. I'm going to go. That's pretty over. good. It felt good tag teaming. Are the cages still intact? For the most part, some of them were kind of mangled and. I'm gonna go to the one that Iopix was in and that whole hold on to a bar, let your you know weight hang on it. Yeah, teamwork. Adorable. For sure. What are you thinking of, Donimus? <laughs> the one that I freed from this cage that helped me bring the ship down. He was in there. He was in here. I unlocked all these cages to let everyone free. I don't know if they all made it out. But he and I did. We took the ship down, escaped on the Pegasus. He and I made a good team, but he and I weren't family. Look at Gideon. Yeah, we're just about as dysfunctional as you can get. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah. And I'll start walking back through this deck. <laughs> I want to look where the guards hung their keys. Anything interesting over here? Not really. I want to look and see if there's a lock pick wedged in the lock of one of these, any one of these games. <laughs> <laughs> like, see? Huh? I was here. <laughs> If there was, it probably rotted away long ago. Yeah. You should have carved an, an X. X. They do that everywhere I go. <laughs> Next time I time travel, I will carve an X into something <laughs> permanent. I mean, yeah, mark? you find just some random, again, it's mostly just small bits and bobs, the little people. gold bracelet, <laughs> copper chalice, some bone dice. So their scimitars um, and everything like dissipated. They were all kind of a yeah. The the sword wraiths themselves were like everything about them was ghostly. Right. I grab up those bone dice, and you see Connor once again take off his backpack, push them in there. <laughs> I'm remembering the poor woman who told me she didn't want to go out. She didn't want to. I unlocked her gate. So there was an orc woman in this one, amongst others, and I unlocked the cage, and she jumped back away from me, and. I told her, this, I'm not going to make you leave, but the, gate, the gate's open, you can go. And she was so terrified of what would happen to her, she got caught. 
that she, uh, I don't know what ended up happening to her. She stayed or ran or what she did. Well, maybe since you unlocked their gates, once this thing started plummeting, it gave them a chance to actually get out rather than being trapped permanently in yeah. a locked cell. You might have actually been the only one to give them a chance to live. No, I friend. know it's been 5,000 years, but I don't see any remains laying around or anything like that. Uh, uh, Gideon, are these uh, these wraithy things, once once they've been dispatched, are they gone or could they rematerialize? This is Michael speaking. I have heard that some of these can return after a certain amount of time. I don't know if these are those. I would say that Gideon would get the sense that this ground is still unhallowed. So there may be something you could do there to- There is uh, something I can do. Not now, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Poppy understand that. It's every day, bud. Yeah, right now I can't, but we might think about doing something with this once we take a long rest. And I say under my breath a little bit toward Gideon, I mean, look at the way, like, look at the way it affects Zonimus. Like he was only here for a little bit of time and you can tell there's a weight on his shoulders. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you could like, uh, yeah, if you could like bless this place or something, that'd be great. Unlocking the gates, and giving them a chance. <clears throat> Is that something your doggo would have smiled on? Oh yeah, you're saving life anytime you're doing that. Especially saving life that can't necessarily defend itself. You're protecting the helpless. What if my intent was to not save lives, but to cause chaos by unlocking the gate, would she still smile? Yeah, you still save lives. The ends can sometimes justify the means. Dysfunctional. Mosey on out. So in the uh, area, so that we didn't find anything else in the area where people were sleeping? Mm-mm. I guess that just a few, few trinkets, nothing. I mean, you know, sell it to the right person, you get about 25 gold a piece. Yeah. But. And those wider, that kind of wider area off to the side, the hammock, what might have been a hammock area and things like that, mm -hmm. nothing there to notice. Yeah, nothing, nothing of real import. Gotcha. So when I said that and walked away, being all dramatic like, unless something stops us, terrain, environment, dead things, living things, I want to see that like Zonimus is walking away from the cages and it's just like an automatic walk kicks in mm -hmm. because I did this just a week ago, took the same walk, mm. and this time, but that time it was a matter of life and death. I remember it, I pick it up, mm -hmm. and it's weird that. Where once you had to very carefully peek around corners, duck behind barrels and boxes, and try to stay out of sight with this gentle but confident presence that was Eopix. Yeah. Because that was the thing. Eopix knew his business. He got me. The hiding, the sneaking, the... You didn't have to tell him twice. So, again, unless, unless something stops us, I'm following that walk. Wait up, I got little legs. <laughs> Most of us have little Wait, legs. Wait, do you know where you're going? This is the way? This is the way. All right. This is the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bando. We, we didn't mean it that way. <laughs> Can you put that music in there? <laughs> You find a set of stairs, a familiar set of stairs, that lead down into the cargo hold. Should we send Poppy again? No, no. I still have wild shape in me if you really want to. Oh, yeah. jeez. But we might want to save that wild shape for later. I mean, when I came down here earlier, like, I could see what I imagined was some kind of engine or forge or something that seemed to have crashed around down here. But that's all I saw. Yeah, because that is part of the problem, is that this area took the brunt of the damage from the fall. Because it was on bottom. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, yep. So much of what was here has been destroyed. It's, it's kind of difficult to pick your way through the rubble. Feet. Do we make it that far, effortlessly, or? Down the stairs and we can look around. Yeah, or, is it, or is that based on what she was saying? Because mm -hmm. the whole thing was, should we send Poppy first? Should we be quiet with? Johnny accidentally made this mistake in his head, so I'm gonna say Zonimus makes it too, of it's completely safe because everything here is gone now. Everyone's gone. 
So it, it may be foolish to think that way, but Zonimus is just walking through like he owns the place. Yeah, you. And yeah, he walked off like he yeah. knew exactly where it was going yeah. and what. Was I'm going. not being sneaky. I don't know. No. What if there's something around the corner? There's nothing around the corner because we killed everything on the ship. Meniopix. And yeah. for a brief moment, I'm stuck there. Like you know what I mean? Forgetting to check for traps yeah. again. I'm distracted by the thought of, and just making my way to the forge. Yeah. So, yeah it's not a where are you? It's a when are you? Or oh, right behind you. Picking your way through, you have to duck under and climb over things, but you eventually come to what would have been the area of the forge room. There is no hint of the battle that was once fought here, as things lie scattered and broken. If you hadn't have been here before, you probably wouldn't have known what it was. Close out of the Azer, through its hammer. You feel the ghost of warmth. You hear phantoms echoing boom. echoing booms and the noise of the engine and of the airship or of the skyship as it sailed. It's all to you almost as fresh as the day of. You can almost hear the way Eopix laughed at the fight before you. I'm actually realizing I'm standing where I was and look over to what would have been him and those two snakes coming up out of the core. Those two red fire snakes. <sighs> so this was the engine. That old, was, uh, that old hunk of medicine right there? There was a crystal here similar to what Smith might be looking for. Wow. But wasn't Mark the whole thing that look. you <laughs> dislodged it? And <laughs> you took it? You shattered it. Shattered, shattered it. Yeah. Yeah. So, is there nothing else around here? We, we check around, looking, there's nothing yeah. left here. All no right. shards of anything that we can find. Give me a perception check. Not a, uh, yeah, no, it's just a 16. Silken strand of soft hair. <laughs> <laughs> 16. Soft 16. Yeah, with a 16, you're looking through and you cannot make heads or tails of this area there's just there's too much damage well i think we've scoured this place as much as we possibly can uh what we'll say we go up to the top camp out and maybe i can bless this area tomorrow morning and see if we might be able to take care of this place the five of you make your way carefully back up to the main deck you find where jasper has set up camp sitting there with Thalia, who is still bound and gagged. Unconscious still? Still, still unconscious. That's a good sign. Jasper looks up and he says, Well, neither myself nor Kikiek have spotted anything. What'd you find? Well, I've heard some little things around, weapons, but sadly I don't think found anything that could have worked on you. No, well, I appreciate you for even just looking. Yeah. It's a big sight for one one dwarf to try and go through. Take years to pick through what remains. There's some pretty nasty, uh, like undead spirits down there. Oh, I, I don't doubt it, boy. I've not seen them myself, but you can feel the ghosts around here. You ever seen anything weird up top here, like around the edge of the pit that's excavated out? No, not that I can say, Mokrin. I've heard rumors that this uh, Pegasus herd somewhere nearby, but other than that. That's so. Uh, really? What do you mean? Like a wild herd of them? Uh, of course, all Pegasi are wild. They're not creatures that can be tamed, boy. You heard any rumor of a fellow roaming these parts? What kind of fella? I mean, I've heard of a lot of rumors. <laughs> well, maybe, uh... I mean, I've heard sometimes people ride him. I dart at Zonimus. <laughs> maybe, uh... Ride a Pegasus, boy. <laughs> <laughs> maybe an elf... Well, now that you... Skin tone to that, that of the sky. Now that you mention it, you ever heard the story of the wandering wind? No. So what they say is that there is an elf who rides atop of Pegasus. No one's really seen him. No one's really talked to him. But they say that he's the only one what has ever made friends with Pegasus.
Red Dirt D&D, Tales from the Caliban Frontier, is Ash King as our Dungeon Master, Brooke Bullock as Macron Stone Chaper, Johnny Payne as Zonimus Dinar, Kiri Hester as Poppy Tealy, Connor Chenold as Connor the Kobold, and I'm Michael Cross as Gideon Block. Our theme music was created by the cinemagician PJ Castillo. Our incidental music comes from Jeffrey McBride. Our sound effects and additional music courtesy of TabletopAudio.com and Monument Studios. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and at RedDirtDnd.com. We here at Red Dirt D&D could really use your help in getting the word out about us. If you like what you've heard, make sure and subscribe, rate us, and leave a comment. Also, tell your friends about Red Dirt D&D. You can also support the show at Patreon.com slash Red Dirt D&D. We have several giving levels to help us grow up big and strong. Join us next time as we go deeper into the Calban frontier.